possible reduction of harvest due to the immediate replacement of chemical fertilizers by organic fertilizers. Introduction When the current issues prevailing in the country are considered, fertilizers have taken center stage. As the younger generation, our team set out to find solutions for the issue. In our search, we have studied the current situation and have found some possible solutions. We have found out that the use of chemical fertilizers for a long period has altered soil composition. There was a tendency to reduce the yield when organic fertilizers were immediately introduced after such a long time. In our study, we realized that the loss of five-year crop could not be supported by the farmers as it could lead to huge impacts socio-economically including food shortage and also affect animal husbandry directly or indirectly. On the other hand, we identified that it isn't possible to point out only a certain remedy. Therefore, we recommend the use of all these seven possible solutions together. Seed hybridization Today, most farmers cultivate seeds which are responding to chemical fertilizers. They have experienced a reduction in the yield when using organic fertilizers because the seeds they have used did not respond to them. The best solution for this issue is the use of seeds which respond well to chemical fertilizers. The production of new varieties of crops which respond well to organic fertilizers is facilitated with the use of genetic engineering technology. Listed below are some facts that are needed to be considered when producing genetically modified seeds. Increased nutritional value, having resistant to diseases, high tolerance for abiotic stresses such as drought, salinity, aluminum toxicity and high heat. A comparatively higher yield can be obtained when genetically modified crops are produced heeding to the above mentioned facts. In Sri Lanka, a wide variety of rice such as suandal, mavi and alvi can be used to produce high yielding new varieties. Special attention should be paid to this end of developing the genetic engineering technology and rapid crop variety hybridization in laboratories. How to increase the microorganisms activity of the soil. As a result of using chemical fertilizers for a long time, the microbial activity in the soil is significantly reduced. In such a situation, there is a tendency to reduce the yield of the crop by turning to the use of organic fertilizers for agricultural purposes. So, effective microorganism technology can be identified as a scientific step to increase the activity of microorganisms in soil. The technology was first introduced in 1982 by a Japanese professor, Teruo Higa. Lactic acid bacteria, yeast, Phototrophic bacteria are the three main groups included in this which can coexist with their immediate environment. Some of the research done using this technology can be summarized as follows. According to an experiment conducted on sweet potato cultivation by the University of Peradin in Sri Lanka, the yield of sweet potato cultivation has increased after the application of EM. The below trial on fried potato was conducted by agricultural holding Hendrix Makos Lebrock, Poland. The result showed that EM gave a significant increase in yield over the fertilized control with an increase of over 7 tons per hectare. In addition, EM had 2% higher percentage of potatoes above 50 mm. In this way, by increasing the activity of microorganisms in the soil in an environmentally friendly manner, the yield reduction can be prevented by applying organic fertilizers. Production of phosphate fertilizers from a power of phosphate deposit. Rock phosphate can be mixed with organic fertilizers to improve nutrient content. They are used for perennial crops. In addition, there is a method of producing single superphosphate from rock phosphate using sulfuric acid. Single superphosphate can be produced locally but there is no sulfuric acid manufacturing plant in Sri Lanka. In the absence of sulfuric acid, it can be imported from abroad but at a high cost. If sulfuric acid can be produced locally, we can efficiently produce phosphate fertilizer from a natural resource. Production of earthworm fertilizers The earthworm is an animal 
that depends on decaying plants and animal parts that are abundant in the upper soil. Earthworms increase the pH of the soil by 0.5 and contribute to the removal of acidity. The earthworms fertilize the soil by adding nitrogen to the soil. So, earthworm liquid fertilizer product is very cheap, can be supplied with low labor and high yielding organic fertilizer product. Shown here is an earthworm liquid manual container made from easily available raw materials. This liquid fertilizer can be used in about half a month and can be mixed with water, diluted and easily applied to the crops. This table shows the nutrient values of earthworm liquid manure. In this way, the yield of the crop can be increased by applying the earthworm liquid fertilizer mixture as an organic liquid fertilizer. Application of seaweed extract as an organic fertilizer Extracts from seaweeds are rich in several bioactive compounds that might act in plants inducing an array of positive physiological responses such as improved biomass production, enhancement of nutrition and resistance to stress. Capophycus alvarezi, a species of red algae is used in production of seaweed extracts. Following are the results obtained by research done in 2018 in Italy. Root growth in response to seaweed extracts. Root size and architecture of maize plants was positively influenced by the addition of seaweed extracts from laminaria. The concentration of calcium, magnesium, sulfur and molybdenum increased in leaves after application of seaweed extracts to plants. The activity of esterase in leaves and roots of maize plants was increased by seaweed extracts. Production of seaweed extracts in Sri Lanka will be a very productive solution for the issues in organic agriculture. Nowadays, almost everything is automated. So why don't we invest in automated agriculture? We can use greenhouse for this purpose. Growers have not been able to control sunlight for a long time, but by setting up greenhouses, energy screens, shade covers, blackout screens and UV filters can be used to control sunlight penetration using poly or plastic covers. We can use a complete greenhouse product if required and we can only use it for certain crops if required. Since greenhouses have a water supply system, wastage of water which normally occurs during cultivation can be avoided. The following chart shows the percentage distribution of farmers by type of irrigation. The five factors of greenhouse environmental control are listed as temperature, humidity, sunlight, soil moisture and carbon dioxide concentration. Nanotechnology for organic agriculture The nutrients in nanofertilizers can be encapsulated inside nanomaterial such as nanotubes or nanoporous material coated with a thin protective polymer film or delivered as particles or immersions of nanoscale dimensions. Nanotechnology could provide devices and mechanisms to synchronize the release of fertilizers with its uptake by crops and releases nutrients only when they can be directly internalized by the plant. Photocatalytic property, nanosized titanium dioxide, has been incorporated into fertilizers as a bacterial additive. It has been observed that carbon nanotubes can enter the hard seed coat of tomatoes and significantly improve the germination index and plant growth. Since we are having a nanotechnology center here in Sri Lanka, it is possible to develop this technology in order to enhance organic agriculture. Now it is time that we weigh the pros and the cons. All of the above suggested solutions provide us with the following benefits. Enhancement of germination and crop yields. Positive growth increments in plant shoot and root architecture. Eco-friendly. Non-toxic and non-hazardous for both humans and animals alike. Improved and accelerated sustainability. And ability to meet the supply to demand expectation efficiently. On the other hand, some drawbacks of these solutions are listed below. Seed hybridization can only be carried out between genetically unrelated varieties. High cost in initiating greenhouses or nanotechnology 
and hence making it less approachable to many farmers. But in the end, the pros outweigh the cons and thus making these suggested solutions suitable against the prevailing issues.